Hey guys, Pastor Tim here. Hope you guys are doing great. Uh, this is a really weird time for us, especially in San Antonio and Texas. Uh, all this winter weather. Hope you guys are staying safe. Hope you guys are staying warm. So hope you're staying healthy as well. If you guys have any problems, if you need anything, of course, Lighthouse Family, you could definitely contact uh, any of your pastoral staff and uh, we'll try to help you in any way that we can. In the meantime, teens, um, because we just started our series, our new series of tough ans or quick answers to tough questions, I really don't want to continue that series uh, through a video lesson tonight. I know I've done that um, in the past with other times we had to close down, uh, but this evening there will not be a teen lesson. I don't want to continue that series. I know not everyone's able to watch uh, the video lessons and, and, and so forth. So I do want to continue that series because I think it's really important uh, when we're all in person. I think it will just work a lot better. So in the meantime, uh, I'll give this will be our morning, our morning devotional daily in the word. All right. And you can also look forward to Pastor Kern's uh, sermon um, and message tonight as well on the YouTube channel. So in the meantime, this is our daily in the world word, eh, not daily in the world, daily in the word devotional uh, for this morning. Uh, we left off on Genesis chapter 28. We are now on Genesis chapter 29. We're following the life of Jacob. So we went from Abraham to uh, Isaac and now to Jacob, the deceiver, the guy who uh, supplanted Esau, tricked him into giving him his birthright, tricked him or tricked a Isaac into giving him the blessing, the covenant blessing. And now he's on the run for his life uh, from his brother Esau because he wants to kill him. Great guy. But anyway, so he runs as his mother instructs him to his uncle Laban, his mother's brother, thinking he's going to be safe there. But as we find out in this chapter that, you know what, Laban himself is quite the deceiver as well. Um, it's kind of ironic, you know, God is kind of showing Jacob in these moments that, you know, hey, you think you're good at being deceitful, you know, well, there's other people that can do that as well. And so Jacob finds himself in this situation. He comes into his mother's homeland. Uh, he meets Rachel, smitten by her beauty immediately. Uh, he also meets Leah, not quite as smitten by her, uh, as the Bible puts it, she's tender-eyed. If you want to say she has a good personality, you can go with that. Um, but obviously, he's very much in, you know, enthralled with uh, Rachel and wants to marry Rachel. So when it gets to the point, Laban, in his fake uh, generosity, he's like, hey, you know, um, you know, I don't want you to work for me for nothing. You know, you're part of the family. What, you know, ask me, what will your wages be? And uh, Jacob says, you know what? Hey, give me your daughter, Rachel. Rachel, I will work for seven years for her hand in marriage. So he does that, he works seven years. And then on the wedding night, uh, now I don't know how this could happen. I don't know if it was due to some custom and he wasn't able to see her face, or maybe he just got a little too, uh, drank a little too much at the wedding ceremony. But the next morning after uh, the, the wedding night, he wakes up and finds out that it's not Rachel in his tent, but it's actually Leah, the oldest daughter. And he goes out and he's, you know, he's kind of mad with Laban. He's like, hey, what is this you've done to me? Uh, that's not the right girl and so forth. And Laban kind of, um, it's kind of ironic what he says. He's like, hey, let it be far, you know, from us to do this in our country, to give the younger before the older. You know, there's preferential treatment to the firstborn, something that Jacob didn't care anything about because Esau was the firstborn and he kind of circumvented him in many de uh, deceitful ways uh, to take his birthright and to take the blessing. And now he's getting this done to him as well. He wanted the younger daughter and Laban tricked him and gave him the older instead. And he had to work for him another seven years in order to marry Rachel. Now, he married Rachel not long after the wedding week, because that's how they did back then. They had a ceremony for a whole week. Guys, be thankful that's not the custom today. That's going to be a lot of money. Uh, but they had the wedding week celebration. After that was done, he then married uh, Rachel. And then he stayed and worked seven years for his uncle Laban. And you got to think about, man, how did it must have felt for Leah during these times? Because here she is. Uh, she's probably enamored with uh, with Jacob, wants to marry him. And he quickly cast her aside right after the wedding uh, festivities are over to marry her younger sister. All right. Because as the Bible says, he loved her more. Much following his mother and father and their favoritism, he also shows favoritism when it comes to uh, his wives. And man, it must have been hard for her. And God sees that that she's hated in Jacob's eyes and he uh, opens her womb and he causes Rachel to be barren. And we see in all the children she has in their names, she's first hoping that because he's having these children, God blessed her with these children. She's hoping that Jacob 
uh, will then love her. But it doesn't happen. We don't see that come to be. And eventually at the end of the chapter, I think it's interesting to note that with the fourth son she has, she's not hoping for anything from Jacob, but she's actually just praising uh, the Lord. All right. I think that's very interesting to see that her her motives, her desires go from trying, you know, for Jacob's affection, affections and it goes to, you know, just praising God. If there's one main thing that sticks out to me from this chapter is you reap what you sow. Jacob, he gets a taste of his own medicine. Well, I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, stay warm, of course. Like I said, if you need any help, let us know and we'll continue our lesson. Quick answers to tough questions next week. Stay safe, stay healthy. God bless.